Hello, I want to welcome you all uh, to the Delul Family uh, Art Collection. Uh, this is a collection of Pan-Arab art. I have with me over here uh, Saleh Barakat. He's a, an old family friend and uh, probably one of the preeminent experts on Arab art in the region. I'm uh, Ramzi Dalul's son. Uh, my father put together this beautiful collection over here. He's doing this uh, with the intention of ultimately uh, building a museum in Beirut, Lebanon, uh, to leave as a legacy for generations to come. So folks like myself and uh, younger generations can uh, be able to see the beautiful art that's created in this part of the world. So we're going to walk through uh, with Saleh today. Uh, he's going to tell you some stories about these paintings. Let's start with one of my favorite artists. Uh, Ayman of Anbaki happens to be one of Salah's artists as well. Ayman is a dear friend and uh, he has some of the most amazing uh, paint strokes uh, that I've ever seen in my life. And uh, He studied in France, he studied in Germany as well. He's definitely one of uh, the most uh, interesting emerging artists of the Arab world, but additionally what is very interesting about this collection to bring us to Ayman is that this collection was not built originally in order to gather artworks that are aesthetically important, but it came as an idea of Dr. Ramzi Dalul to use the art of this region as a way to awaken a desire of a renaissance in, in the political uh, scene. So he particularly focused on artists that are politically engaged and that are trying to convey a message that reflects the lot of things that are happening or the lot of conflicts that are happening in this region. In 1982, I believe, in June, it was June the 12th, I think the Israelis bombed Beirut airport and he painted and they destroyed some of the airplanes, the Middle East Airlines planes on the tarmac. And this is a beautiful example uh, of some of Ayman's work. Of course, apart from the symbolic representation of the Middle East Airlines, because it represents somehow the Middle East, uh, what is, is very interesting about the, the work, because of course there is the political layer that we're very interested in, but the great artist is the one who is capable to transcend the political into Art. Absolutely. And in the case of Ayman, you can see how he can combine his capacity to use collage of, of old posters taken from the street on which he can add layers of printed fabric that he also uh, mix with a lot of his touch in, in paint in order to create a, an artwork that is in itself. And if you come and look closely uh, at the paint strokes in this uh, amazing piece, one of my favorite things about Ayman is are his paint strokes, actually. I mean, I, I sit down and photograph his paintings in detail, coming into this stroke over here, this stroke over here, the paint over there, watching him do his work is absolutely an unbelievable experience. Here we have another one of uh, both my dad's and my favorite paintings uh, by a very imposing late Moroccan artist by the name of Hamad Al-Qasimi. This painting is uh, over 10 meters long and uh, about 3 meters in height. It's incredible size for an incredible artist, but uh, what is really very important about this painting, it was painted after the Americans uh, bombarded Baghdad. That's right. It represents a, a very important moment because Iraq is part of the Arab world and it's a, it, it, it was the start of a, a lot of degeneration in the political situation in the Arab world. And it shows somehow a little about the Arabicity this collection is interested about, how a Moroccan artist who lives between Paris and Casablanca uh, ends up being interested in the Palestinian cause or in the Iraqi war or in the Lebanese conflict and how these, that brings all the Arabs together. Here we have two rooms called Welcome to Baghdad. We're going to focus on this beautiful painting. Well, not really a painting, it's a collage of materials by Hanat Malala, an Iraqi artist that are 
expressing the way they feel about what happened to their country uh, at the hands of the United States. Hana is uh, the, one of the students of Master Shakir Hassan Al Said, who was one of the Iraqi uh, modernist artists. What is interesting is how Hana uh, was able to take uh, this work further and use it another politically charged artwork, of course, but then again, transcending it into an extremely fantastic collage. Absolutely, in, in this room you'll, you'll see several works by Hanna, uh, a couple of works by uh, Mahmoud Shubbar, another Iraqi artist. Uh, there are several other works that you'll see in a moment over here by Mahmoud uh, Obedi. Uh, there's uh, a halo okay. of shoes uh, with George Bush in the middle. I, I have an interesting story to tell you here. I, I was born and raised in the United States. I'm a U.S. citizen. And uh, when my father wanted to buy this particular piece, which you'll see in a moment, he called and asked me if I would be bothered if he bought this, and I said, no, uh, you know, these are, these are Iraqi artists that are expressing themselves about a situation that happened in their country, uh, which uh, unfortunately was done at the hands of my country. This piece over here is by another young Iraqi, well, youngish Iraqi artist by the name of Nazar uh, who did this beautiful triptych depicting uh, an Apache helicopter uh, that likens to mosquitoes. Uh, mosquitoes come and bite people at night while they're asleep. Uh, they don't feel the bite until after the bites happen. And uh, the same here goes for how these four Iraqi villages were bombed by U.S. Apache helicopters. Uh, this particular piece is called Bad Game. This is very Akamali. I think this is a very, very symbolic piece in the collection because it tells about the, the relationship of the Palestinian people to the OLFTs. They are, it, it became somehow the symbol of their rooting into their land. And it's a very a contemporary installation that she did with uh, She's a Ceramist too. And it shows this extremely organic relationship that uh, uh, relates the, the Palestinian people to the olives and the olive trees in particular. A few paintings over here, three of them of uh, one of my favorite artists, uh, and I think one of the best painters in the world, Nabil Nahas. In fact, another case of a representation of somebody who really understood the, his identity and the contemporary world today and how he looks at the infinitely small and the infinitely big and looking for harmony into nature and developing his own techniques using pigments mixed to uh, acrylic and uh, pumice powder in order to uh, bring an artwork that is really representative of a very contemporary understanding of unity uh, that has multiple manifestations. One of our favorite Lebanese artists here, uh, Hamad al -Rawas. A very interesting case because always the one of of course, the objectives of uh, this collection is to showcase uh, a lot of things about the Arab world that are usually un misunderstood. One of them is uh, women in the Arab societies, the place of women in Arab societies. And this is a highly uh, erudite artist who always want to create in his painting and the utopian society that he dreams of, in which the women will be the central part. Speaking of women, we have uh, another artist, one of my father's and my favorite artists, uh, Paul Gerg, the late Paul Garagosian, uh, who was actually born in Jerusalem, uh, from an Armenian family. Uh, he painted a lot about the Armenian exodus and uh, he almost always depicted women in his paintings. So we have a series of paintings over here. This room we're walking into over here is home to two uh, amazing Sudanese artists, Ibrahim Salahi, and the other one around us is uh, Hamad Omar Khalid. The Sudanese uh, the school of Khatun is uh, very peculiar, very interesting, because somehow it shows the relationship of Sudan and between uh, the Arab Islamic world and Black Africa. And you can see all the different uh, influences of uh, 
both civilizations and culture into one painting. And these more uh, later works went much more minimalistic, and now he is more into a Sufi trip, talking about the tree of life and taking all the uh, ornamentation off. On the other hand, Hamad Omar Khalil, because of living in New York, it's obvious that he is also uh, influenced by the place where he lives, although he uh, splits his life between New York, Asila, Morocco, and Khartoum. And we can see those assemblages that are very reminiscent of Flauschenberg. We have a few artists we're going to cover over here. One of my favorites, uh, Salim Adwayi. This relationship, particularly with, with you, Basel, these are artists, most of them, who lived part of their life in the Arab world and part of, the, part of their life in, let's say, in this case, in uh, New York, while always dreaming of his homeland. And he is very well known to paint one subject all, practically all his life, which is the Saint uh, Valley of Qadisha in northern Lebanon. All right, so we're going to switch now to uh, another of uh, my favorite artists, Fugit Galon, who was also known as the Queen of Venice. So we have the East Coast artist, Salim and Wake, and now we're going to come to the West Coast artist. She comes from a very prominent uh, family. Her father was the very first president of Lebanon, but nonetheless she was a very revolutionary lady who was very interested in the rights of women. They are full of joy, especially when she moved to Venice uh, County to, in California. One, one interesting thing to mention is that most of these the artists of the Arab world, the truth is, have traveled a lot. They were highly educated. They've seen a lot. This room is uh, one of my father's favorite rooms, actually. Uh, this is one of the rooms we call the sacred room because I'm not allowed to touch any of these etchings. This is a Palestinian artist by the name of uh, Mustafa Al-Hallaj. As we went from uh, earlier from the East Coast to the West Coast, uh, now we're coming here to the middle of the United States in Houston, Texas. Uh, there was a show at the Dominion Collection, I believe, called Made in Palestine, in which this wonderful, uh, fabulous artist, uh, Etcher. This is one of the best kept secrets of this collection. Mustafa al Hallaj is an absolutely fantastic artist with a very special iconography to himself that dedicated his entire life to defend the Palestinian cause. Actually, he used to work for the PLO, and so most of uh, the works he produced are wood prints that he used to distribute. And that's why uh, somehow he was never acknowledged in the, in the establishment of art. Is that because they were propaganda? They were used as propaganda? They were probably used, yeah, to, to defend the, a little bit the policy of the PLO. But mostly he was not into politics. He talks the story of the Palestinian uh, people. But I think definitely thanks to the Dalul collection, now there is opportunity to see enough of his work to make a further study of this really uh, outstanding but uh, very unknown artist. Well, here we have a huge painting by a triptych by Sleiman Mansour. Uh, he's very well known to uh, capture a little bit the essence of, of Palestine, so he always uh, tackles the issues of for instance, they, it is always said that Palestine was not, it was a desert, but in fact, he always focuses on uh, that the Palestinians were great peasants and that they have uh, a lot of olives. And in this case, orange a lot orchards. of, they are very, very famous for their orange of Jaffa. And we will see in uh, uh, two other paintings in, uh, in, an, in, in a second, how uh, for him, how he essentializes the fact that Palestine as a cause, as a country, is still carried by the Palestinian, no matter what. Here we have uh, another Palestinian artist, by the, and one of my favorite Palestinian artists, by the name of Hassan Abu Shaka. 
He essentialized the Palestinian identity and the resistance with the cactus, this uh, a cactus uh, that is very typical of resilience of, uh, of uh, the plant being there, being attached to this land. Not, but uh, what's very interesting is this, uh, this is his last work before he died. He died cactus. very young. The black cactus with the city that is uh, in, 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 the in the back. We have uh, a Moroccan artist by the name of Muhammad uh, Al-Malihi. His work is very representative of the place where he comes from, where there is a lot of sea, then it's a, 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 the presence of the sea is always very present. And the Zilnish, which is a kind of a ceramic that is very typical of Morocco. And within that, the use of the crescent, which is the moon, because the, the people who go to Asila will recognize this relationship between the city overlooking the sea and the relationship with Ramadan, with the moon, with the Zelij. And of course, there is a very stylized presence of the woman always. Here we have uh, Farid al and uh... One of the masters of Moroccan art, he stylized the Berber culture using all the tattoos and, and the signage of... Uh, with this henna, with henna, right? Using henna on vellum, using ven uh, henna on, on sheepskin sheep or on goat skin, always using pigments and using all the, the different signs of the uh, uh, atlas, atlas uh, uh, area of uh, Morocco. This is Mohamed Khadda, one of the masters of Algerian art. He's very well known to have stylized Arabic calligraphy, using Arabic calligraphy into a modernistic approach. He has a very typical style where he blends the, the, the essence of calligraphy, because it's not really calligraphy, but the, blending the essence with the city of Algier, the Medina of Algier, in a very characteristic way. But we have also here uh, one of the very pioneers of, uh, of Moroccan art, uh, uh, Mohamed El Mrabti, from the turn of the century. In addition, to Hatem al Makki, one of the most important Tunisian. Hadid uh, Turki over Hadid here. Turki also, Rafi al Kamel. We're still in the Maghreb area over here. We have Khwader uh, uh, Triki. We have uh, Sahili over here from Tunis. We have uh, Qureshi. Rashid Qureshi, known to stylize Arabic calligraphy. Sahli again. Sahli again. We have Mahdash. And we have also another Inja, master. Inja Mahdawi known for stylizing also Arabic calligraphy. And then we have two paintings from Algeria. Uh, and uh, Ben Antar. Ben Antar. This is uh, Samia Halabi, one of my all-time favorite painters. Uh, she has a, an amazing grasp of color and geometry. Always related, although she is Christian, but she was fascinated by uh, Islamic art and the geometry and the arabesque. And she always worked on stylizing this until she uh, reached uh, this period where, again, working on these repetitive modules, for her, it's like all the trees look alike, but they're not the same. All the people look alike, but they're... And going back to this principle of unity with multiple manifestation, which is very representative of the divine in this part of the she, world. She is an amazing, truly, truly amazing painter. This is another one of my favorite young Palestinian artists uh, who actually did these two pieces over here, uh, Abd al-Rahman al this is a little bit the story of his family and most of the Palestinian families, his grandpa, his grandma and his aunts leaving their house theoretically for six days. They thought they are coming back. They took little stuff and they went to Lebanon and were never able to, to come back 60 years later. How about this tornado? And this tornado is really a made, out of barbed wire. made fully of barbed wire that have been weaved with his own hands, representing all this violence that is ravaging this part of the world and taking with us all our dreams and all our hopes into the unknown.
We have a dear friend of my father's, Biyad uh, Azzawi. He has a very big career spanning many different periods, but uh, we are standing here in front of a very uh, famous work of his, which is a series he did just uh, after the massacre of Sabra and Shatila uh, post the Israeli invasion to Lebanon in 1982. It's titled, We Are Not Seen But Corpses, and somehow it, it tackles the issues that Arabs are very, or particularly the Palestinians, they, they are never mentioned in the international news, but in case of catastrophe. And he represented it in a series of seven etchings that are like a kind of uh, an Arab Guernica. A little bit about Khaled Hafiz uh, as an Egyptian artist, actually all these are Egyptian artists. When I did that, Khaled actually contacted me and asked me how I knew uh, about the placement I put him in. I asked, well, what do you mean? He said, well, Hamid Neda, who was on either side of him in this painting here, was his teacher. And he said, did you also know that Inji of Lahore was Hamid Neda's muse? And in fact, a lot of times in, in uh, Hamid's paintings, you see Inji appearing in there. He liked them quite a bit, so he... Sure, of course, Inji is one of the pioneers. She started her life uh, as a painter in the Surrealistic School, which is a very important school uh, that started with Hunain and, and the group of uh, uh, freedom and liberty in Egypt. And she, then she developed her own style about uh, uh, it, landscape in Egypt, the people in Egypt before she went to jail. Nice thing to see here is three generation of artists that are typical of the development of art in the, in the Arab world. You have somebody working on the landscape and the population, then Hamid Nada moving into uh, the local and popular mythologies and ending up with uh, the younger uh, generation which is trying to fuse everything including going back into archaeology and the history of Egypt and mixing it with very contemporary images in order to create a very contemporary artwork. There are over 3,500 pieces in this collection so all you got to see today was just a sampling of it and uh, we hope to have this open uh, to the public in the form of a museum sometime soon. This is uh, a legacy my father, Dr. Ramsey Dalul, wants to leave behind for generations to come to enjoy. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you, Father. Thank you very much for joining me and uh, making this a fun, interactive experience for everyone.